All right, so in this video, we're gonna be knocking out something called conditional probability. Conditional probability is really important in genetics because number one, it's kind of a tough concept. Number two, the thing that's really gonna trip you up once you understand the concepts we're gonna talk about, the thing that's really gonna trip you up is when to actually use it because sometimes professors will sneak a little word in there um, and you think that you know how to do the problem but you actually had to use conditional probability and we'll talk about some situations like that. So to start off, we're gonna talk about something a little more elementary than um, a genetics problem. Um, and we're going to talk about the chances of rolling a two on a fair dice. Um, everybody knows, right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six, so we've got six possibilities, and we want to know what the chance of rolling exactly a two is. It's going to be one-sixth, right? So the next question I'm going to ask, this is what makes it a little bit, this is what makes it a conditional probability um, problem. If I tell you it's an even number, I roll the dice and I can see it and you can't, and I rolled it and I say, it's an even number. And then I ask you, what are the chances that it's a two? Your chances just went up, right? Because now instead of the possibilities being one, two, three, four, five, or six, it's only two, four, six, the three even numbers, right? So two is one of those three possibilities. So our chance, if it is even, chance of rolling a six now becomes one third. What about if I said it's odd, right? That'll mess with the probability even more because we went from a 1 6 chance, now I'm telling you I already rolled it, it's an odd number, what's the chance that it's a 2? Well, it's impossible, right? We all know that. So it's going to be a 0% chance down here. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. We're going to apply it to a genetics problem here, and hopefully we'll be able to apply these same principles over here. So. What we're going to do is we're going to do a pretty common problem. It's a colorblindness problem. So colorblindness is in humans is on the X chromosome. Um, so you can inherit anything about colorblindness from your dad, right? Because your dad would give you the Y, assuming you're a guy. Um, and then if you're a girl, you will get it from both dad and mom. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out. I'm going to say, what's the chance that these two have a child that is colorblind? And then we're going to look at it and we're going to say, okay, what, if you have, what are the chances you have a boy that's colorblind? What are the chances you have a girl that's colorblind? Right? So we're going to start out with our Punnett square. And we're going to do dad up here. And um, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, this is a recessive allele, right? So it's an X linked recessive allele. So when I draw this, you would need to have two bad copies um, if you are a girl to actually have it. If you're a boy, right, you're hemizygous, so you're only going to need one. So if we look at this, this is what we've got. So hopefully you guys have already covered um, X-linked disorders. Uh, if not, this might be a little bit confusing to you, but like I said, it's recessive, so as long as you have a dominant allele to cover it up, you're fine, you're not colorblind. But in guys, guys are what's called hemizygous, right? So we have the Y chromosome here counts as half of it, and so that's not going to count for anything, right? It's not dominant or recessive. So only one bad allele will give it to the guy. So like we said, we're going to ask if these two are crossed, they want to know um, what is the chance that we're going to have a child that's colorblind. So we're going to look at this and we're going to say, okay, this child, not colorblind, right? Because we have our plus right here. This child, this is a plus, sorry. Um, this child, we have a plus, right? Not colorblind. This child, no plus, just an X minus and a Y, colorblind, X minus and Y, colorblind. So the chance that we are going to have a child that is colorblind is two out of four, or 50%. Now, what if I told you that they had a girl? Right, so we know it's a girl. So we have to actually cut out some of our possibilities. We know that none of these guys are our possibilities anymore. We're only gonna look over here. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna say, okay, now that we're just looking at the girl section, we've got two possibilities, and we're gonna look at each of them individually and see if they're colorblind. So X plus X minus, not colorblind, because it's got that dominant allele. X plus X minus, not colorblind, because it's got that dominant allele. So for a girl, we have a 0% chance of being colorblind, right? Kind of similar to we had the odd situation, right? So what about if it's a guy? If it's a guy, we're only gonna look over here and we're gonna say, okay, X minus Y, colorblind, right? X minus Y, colorblind, because of the reasons we talked about earlier. So if it's a guy, a boy, then there's a 100% chance that he's gonna be colorblind. So can you guys see how we went from this to this? 
um, and how the same principles kind of applied. The last thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about um, lethal alleles. Lethal alleles are where a professor will trip you up on this stuff. And the reason being is because the professor will say, what's the chance that they have a child, blah, blah, blah. Well, if it's a lethal allele and you have the recessive trait for that, well, if you are homozygous recessive, then you aren't a child because you are dead, unfortunately. So we're going to look at two heterozygous parents. And there is a um, homozygous recessive um, child will die. It's a lethal allele. So if you have both of the tiny alleles, if you're homozygous recessive, then um, unfortunately it's uh, not viable. So the parents want to know, hey, okay, what's the chance that we're going to have um, you know, a baby that's going to have this, right? Um, or what's the chance that we're going to have a carrier is a good, good way to look at a question like this. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to cross them. Two heterozygotes, and when I cross them like this, big A, big A, big A, little A, big A, little A, little A, little A. Right, so we've got one-fourth, big A, big A. One-half, big A, little A. And one-fourth, little A, little A. I want to know, and pause the video, I want you guys to try and figure this one out on your own. I'm telling you this is a conditional probability problem. Your professor won't be so nice. You have to actually figure this one out on your own on whether or not it's conditional probability. Like we said, this is a lethal allele. A couple, this couple here has a child and they want to know what's the chance that child is a carrier. All right, so pause the video, try and figure that out using our conditional probabilities and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So the key thing here, most of you guys are saying, oh, what are the chances it's a carrier? One half, bang, right? Especially if the professor doesn't, isn't talking about conditional probability at the moment. Because you see, we know carriers are big A, little A. Um, they're not, uh, they don't have the condition, whatever it may be, um, but they can pass it on, right? So we, we look at this, we say, oh, it's a one half chance. That's gonna be one of the answer choices you're gonna circle and move on. Don't be that person, because what's going to happen is, if they tell you it's a lethal allele, anytime you have a lethal allele, conditional probability needs to pop into your head, because that means this child does not exist. This child was never born. So a quarter of those children are never born because it's a lethal allele, right? So the chance that it are percent, are, this guy goes away. So our number of possibilities is now down to one, two, three. And of those three, two of them are carriers. So in reality, two thirds of their babies will be carriers, right? Does that make sense? Because one fourth isn't a possibility because that child wasn't viable. So they say, it, once they tell you we had a child, we know this one can't exist. So then we go with our remaining possibilities and we look at two thirds. So these are the two real situations where you're going to see it. Um, this one's pretty obvious because it, the chance for guys and the chance for girls is obviously going to be different because it is an X-linked trait. That's true for all X-linked traits. Um, this one's the one that's going to be a little more tricky. Um, like I said, oftentimes professors ask this question and they're not going to be too specific about it. Anytime you see the word lethal allele, immediately be thinking conditional probability because if it is a lethal allele, a quarter, if we're assuming a homozygous recessive, um, is the lethal allele, then a quarter of those babies aren't even going to be born. So then we change our number of possibilities and we use our conditional probability rules. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts in this video are referencing material from this specific textbook. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during normal business hours. For more information about our services, please visit our website, www.baylor.edu. Thank you.